on behalf of 24HourAnswers.com, I welcome you to today's lesson. In this video, we're going to look at another example of integration by substitution. And for this particular video, I'm going to go ahead and say that U sub is pretty much required to complete this antiderivative. Up until this point, part one, two, and three, we could do those without U substitution. But in part three, I kind of stress that U sub would definitely be the better route there much faster. It dodges a lot of algebraic steps that we would have to complete otherwise. And here in part four, a classic type of U sub problem that you'll first be introduced to is where you have a combination of a sine with some cosines or vice versa. Now, don't ever forget this. The derivative of sine is cosine and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Now, it does matter which one you pick in this particular example. Now, I went ahead and rewrote this. The cosine x all to the fifth, uh, you know, that right there can fool people a little bit, but it's the same thing as this right here, cosine of x all to the fifth power. Now, sine has an understood exponent of 1, but notice if we let u be equal to just the cosine of x, not cosine to the fifth, just cosine of x. If we find the derivative of cosine of x, that's going to be negative sine of x dx. Now you may wonder, what do we do with this negative? We can divide both sides by negative one, giving us negative du is equal to sine of x dx. And to see what's going to happen here, the u is going to completely replace the cosine. So we're gonna have u to the fifth at the bottom. And this negative du is going to replace sine of x dx. Well, that's this stuff that we have up top. Therefore, when we apply that substitution, that negative from that du, we can just pull it to the outside of the integral. Sine of x dx, we have the negative du, so I can stick my du up top, over, and since the u is going to replace the cosine of x, we have u to the fifth power. And another way that you may see this written is the following. We just kind of pull that du out to the side, and we have 1 over u to the fifth. Now, I'm going to rewrite it yet one more time. I'm going to have negative integral, and I'm going to pull this u to the fifth up to the top, making the exponent negative, so u to the negative 5 du, and now we can integrate this fairly quickly. Integrating with powers, we have negative u, we want to add 1 to the exponent, so that's negative 4, and then we divide by that same number, so we have negative 4 plus some constant c. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and simplify. The negatives cancel each other out. We can shoot this back down to the bottom if we would like. So if we shoot that to the bottom, we're gonna have a one up top. The four becomes positive because these two negatives here cancel each other out. So we have four u to the fourth plus some constant c. And then our final answer here is just going back and substituting whatever u was equal to. u was equal to the cosine of x. So therefore we have one over four cosine of x, and the cosine of x is raised to the fourth power plus some constant c. Now if you wanted to go back and take that 4, throw away these parentheses, and stick the 4 between the cosine and the x, there's nothing wrong with that. I like leaving my answers like this. That's personal preference. Either way is going to be fine. But what I don't want you to do is start looking for shortcuts for these types of problems. Now something to note here is this. It was important to let u be the cosine piece, therefore we could get that sine of x dx when we found du. This would be incorrect. If you let u be equal to sine of x, which is gonna be the top part, du would be cosine of x dx, but that's going to be a problem because that cosine of x that we have here is stuck inside of an exponent, and you don't wanna do that. So there is a correct way and an incorrect way of dealing with sines and cosines when you're applying u substitution to a problem. And I encourage you to practice more examples of that. Uh, we'll probably see another example in this series here before we start tackling some definite integrals. Every problem up until this point has been an indefinite integral. When we get to definite integrals, there's some more strategies and shortcuts we can apply to tackle those problems as well. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel for more videos. Links to our social media are in the description below.